Aw, Anders said, T-Nax, Jay Sano. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is Jeff again. I'm coming to you from the Minecraft server. And as you guys just saw, Anders said thanks. So I think he appreciated what I've done for him, which is the ultimate goal. Um, after doing all that stuff for Anders, though, I unfortunately did go through and use a lot of the resources that I had to make some rail... Um, things like that, which really puts me at a desperate need yet again to do some mining. And I think what I want to do is, what level am I at? 18. Let's go up to, let's go up to 21. I think I'm going to start a brand new strip mine here at this layer and see, or branch mine, excuse me, and see if we can come up with anything good let me make sure he's in the right pick well that already sounds good because it looks like there's uh looks like there's bad things that i don't want to deal with let's just move this up here it looks like i've already come to this area and just not taken care of it oh crap man these guys are brutal too when you where did he come from? I was going to say, these guys are brutal when you uh, don't regen automatically. Okay, here he is. So we need to get this thing taken care of. Okay, that's taken care of. This guy is going to hurt me. Then I think I need to... I might need to go regen. Unless he's in a spot where... Is this a one-shot? This is a one-shot kill sword. That is beautiful for these guys almost seems like kind of a waste to use it on this web why do I have a bad feeling there's something else oh no there's not but well that was short lived fun oh my god this water is brutal but anyways oh, okay let's get rid of that get up here there we go so yeah, what I'm going to have to do is I have to, and this is somewhere I've already been. Yeah, I had blocked it off because of that, so now I know that that is safe. Man, I blocked off a lot of stuff down here, didn't I? I did. It's an old place that I was exploring. So now we just got to continue to mine, to strip mine over here and see if we can come up with anything good. It's going to be really hard to strip mine, though, with... Uh, there's so many openings here, and I don't remember what diamond layer is, but that's okay. Because I am now finding my iron that I desperately need for one. So this will be a good start. And while I'm doing this, I'll tell you guys, last night I was at the fire station. And you don't... The last couple of weeks that I've been there, I've ridden multiple different units throughout the night, uh, just based on staffing and, you know, who's there and who needs to leave and things like that. And I think last week, they got a total of one call between... All, we were running four different units, and between all of them, they got a total of one call. So it was a very light night. The week before, I don't think there was a single call. So you go for a long time with nothing, and then you get nights like last night. Where last night our ambulance was pretty busy, I was on the engine, and we actually went out for two different legitimate working fires, which was, I'm the type of person who, I say things in a weird way, like I say, I got a good fire, I got a good fire last night. Um, I don't mean good fire as in like, no fire is really good, fire that, you know, can damage somebody's home that can cause, you know harm to, you know, person, harm to, you know, family, harm to animals, uh, anything like that is bad in, in general concept. When I say good fire, I mean, it's like the concept of a CPR in progress when it gets called for, for an EMS call or an ambulance call. No CPR in progress is ever good. It means somebody is not doing well. But when I say good, I mean it to the extent of, oh, I can still touch these actually. Take him back and do some some fortune on him. But I say, like, if something like that is going to happen, I would rather be there when it does so that I can be one of the people to to help out. Um, especially when it comes to CPR. I constantly hear about people who do CPR. Uh, like patrons 
walking by or a family member calls 911 they don't know what's going on and a 911 operator has to give them instructions on how to do CPR over the phone because they are unaware and I'm like in those type of situations is when I'm like if it's gonna happen I'd rather be there I'm trained I want to be able to help with that stuff when I can so when I say good fire don't take it in the wrong way as and I think that fires are great and blah 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 but there was two good fires last night um so it was a very entertaining night I don't know why I have my coordinates on still it was a very entertaining night from that perspective uh if you're a firefighter you're gonna go out there and you're gonna want to have fire the second fire came at it wasn't super late it was only like 12 30 or something like that at night uh, I had just gone to sleep and yet again I did not wake up to the box stones there are little pre-alerts that go off before they dispatch out a, a working fire I didn't wake up to that. Luckily, I was uh, in a bunk room with some other people who did wake up to it, and they actually, before the dispatch even went out, they heard the box tones. He looked over one of the guys and saw that I hadn't gotten up, and he was like, Jeff, 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 get up, get up. This is you. This is you. So I kind of, you know, started to wake up a little bit there, and I never grabbed water. That was dumb. I should have grabbed that one bucket of water because I want to get all these rails, and now it's going to be the tedious task of grabbing them this direction. Um, so... I started to wake up enough for when they dispatched the address. I didn't know exactly where it was at, uh, but he apparently did. And he just yelled, he goes, go, 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 that's going to be you. So I just started running down the stairs. And I was sitting there, and I looked down for my shirt real quick. I was sleeping in like a white undershirt, and I went, re uh, realized I couldn't find in the dark. I couldn't find my, my blue T-shirt that we wear. Um, so I just like went anyway. I was like, I'm going to have my fire gear. And I've made this mistake before. You know, I stole a man's shoes because I was frantically looking around for something I really didn't even need. So I was like, just move on, get out of the room, go get ready to go. So as we're running down the stairs, they actually do, you know, send out the dispatch for, for us to go. So I sit there, I get next to the engine, grab my jacket off the side of the engine uh, throw it on the throw it on the ground so it's because I was in front of somebody else's stuff too so I grabbed it I threw it on the ground to get it out of his way um, so I was ready I jumped and put like jumped into the, my uh, my pants pulled my pants up went to start putting my jacket on and I felt down in my pants pocket looking for my hood to put on I couldn't find my hood anywhere I started feeling again and I looked at the guy who was standing next to me and I was like, dude, I was like, my hood's gone and my gloves are gone. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like somebody took my hood and my gloves. So he's like looking around the floor for everything really quick. We can't find anything. So I'm about to step out of this box because I can't go to a fire without the proper equipment. Oh yeah. I, I don't know why I came all the way out here. Actually, I was just coming out to get some regen potion, but instead I ended up coming all the way out this way. I figure I should go check the death games right now. Nobody else is on, but I could just sleep through the night. Curious to see. My doors are broked. <laughs> They're all broked. I wonder if some zombies came in. I wonder if the zombies wanted to go sleep. I still got a chest full of stuff down here, don't I? I do. Ooh, let me take this with me. Okay. I was just going to check it out while I was here. Um, so then the, the engine driver comes down and he just stands next to the engine door and he's staring at me, frantically searching through the pockets. And he just kind of looks at me with this funny face. And I was like, dude, I can't find my hood. I can't find my gloves. I'm not going to be able to go. And he goes, Jeff, those are my pants. I was like, <laughs> I looked down. My pants were sitting next to him, like in the corner. I had in my groggy state. Now, not only have I stolen a man's shoes, but I've now stolen a man's pants. So I'm just like, I don't know if I'm working my way up the chain, down the chain, what you would call that. But yeah, I'm just apparently a thief at the firehouse when I have when I have a, an alarm that goes off in the middle of the night. I, I'll steal your shoes. I'll steal your pants. I don't care. I'm going to steal this engine next time. I don't know. Um, but we end up going out and getting to the, going to the fire. And he's kind of laughing about it. But at the same time, it did delay us by a good 30 seconds. So I felt really bad because we wanted to get there as fast as, as we humanly and possibly could. And we ended up still getting there quite fast. Uh, I don't want to go back down that hole anymore, actually. I want to go... I want to go see if I explored... All of 
some of these. I have some areas over here that I was digging down in. There's that one there. I think there's one over here I can go down in. Oh, we'll go find it. But either way, yeah. So we got out the door a little bit slower than we should have. We still ended up being in the in the same running order and everything. And we get to this fire, and there's nothing evident, but it was an apartment complex on fire. So you don't really know, or it was, it was reported in one of these buildings, which there, there truly was a uh, a pretty pretty massive fire that uh, did some did some damage. Um, how far down does this thing go? Okay, I got some air right there. Oh God. Oh God. I am not going to make that get up. But we were the fifth do engine. So we actually are supposed to, on that on that type of assignment, we are supposed to proceed to command and actually wait for an assignment. We don't have an official assignment yet. Uh, we're just kind of waiting to see where we're needed. And basically, we were told to go... Should have followed that water down, shouldn't I? There we go. Let's do that. Whoa. <laughs> this thing works a little trippier than it used to, huh? Oh, man. It's scary. Okay, I'm on the ground. Um. Oh, it's one of my spawners. Nice. Which spawner was this? Spider spawner. Not that I really need a spider spawner. Um, but we go, and I am I was technically fifth on the engine last night. So I was supposed to be the layout man, but we actually don't lay out in that situation. Interesting. We don't lay out in that situation. We're going to go connect with uh, connect up somebody else's supply line if they need it, and then um, wait for for commands. So we don't, we don't have to lay out ourselves. So we ended up parking somewhere. Our driver gets out, does the connection that he needs to make, and they said, okay, we're going to go get drag a... 300 foot line from one of these other engines and try to get it there because the the complex oh there we go there we go that's what i wanted to see darkness the complex is relatively far off the oh off the uh driveway area so it's a long ways to go in there so we said we're gonna go grab a line we're gonna get in there with this line get in, establish a line and water supply up there we were fifth due we were the first ones there with a working line, and it still took us a while to get one because we walked. They told me to grab a standpipe pack and follow them that they're going to go pull this line off of this engine. So I grab a standpipe pack. It's a 100-foot bundle of, like, two-inch hose. It's, it's not super heavy, but it's not light either. So I'm walking with that, following the rest of my crew. They stopped at an engine. Our officer says, okay, grab this uh, this 300 line off of there and let's drag it because then you're going to connect it to the standpipe pack, and that's how we're going to get our water supply. Sometimes when you pack some of these hose lines, they you can pack them in if you don't pack them well, like a little too tight. So they pack this one in really tight on the corner. So our 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 lineman who was gonna go grab the stuff, he is struggling trying to pull this thing out because it was just like wedged in there and it was tight. Yes, and we tried to back him up real quick and help him. Um, so we're, we're slowly working the thing out of there, but I mean, it was squoze in the corner of this engine, however they packed it. And I looked up and my shift officer goes, Hey Jeff, get over here. I, uh, uh, there's a, just grab this line instead. He, so he drags a line partially off of another engine that's in front of him. And I'm looking and our other guys are still working on that other line and uh, trying to get it out, and he told me to grab it, and he goes, get it to the door as quick as you can, get a water supply there now. So I'm walking with a standpipe pack over my right shoulder. I've got um, a three-inch line sitting over my left shoulder. This shit is getting heavy. And I walk, and I drag this thing all the way up, down the sidewalk, down this big set of stairs. I stretch it to the end. Granted, the rest of my crew came and helped me uh, stretch the back of the line because I couldn't have carried all of it like and been able to stretch it through this parking lot and everything. So they were helping me stretch the back of the line. So finally they do that. We... 
I, I dropped the stamp pipe back. I dropped it. I opened it up, gave the nozzle to my lineman, and I said, hey, you take it, you go. By the time you get up there, I will have you I will have you connected. So he ended up going up all the way to the third floor of this apartment complex. Line barely made it in the door of the third floor, but we were the first ones there with uh, with an established line. So we, we felt pretty good about ourselves for being fifth due. We got our we got our stuff done, man. And we were we were we were there for a couple hours and we were definitely tired when all was said and done, but it was a good night for us as firemen to go out there to to this fire so we had a good old time and then at the end of the night when we're packing up our engine and all these other engines because we're repacked or we're reparked everybody else is loading up their their uh lines they're pulling them off of us because we ended up getting a spot which because they didn't originally know exactly what it was a garden apartment whoa i almost got hit by that exactly which apartment door to walk in to get to the uh the apartment that had the fire going in it so we ended up where our, our our engine was was close enough to where a lot of people were started dragging lines off of us so we didn't take a single line off of us except for i got the standpipe pack um but we had pretty much all of our our lines were deployed by the time we got back so we had a lot of packing up to do so we're doing all this packing up we get done packing up i'm not paying attention i was up on top helping drop some hose in with my uh my our driver <laughs> This is the guy whose pants I already stole. We finish up. I close up the top lids. I start moving on. But two or three minutes later, I hear him yell, Hey! Hey! And I was like, I looked up, and he's still sitting on top of the engine. I closed all the ladders up, so he had no way to get down from the engine anymore unless he wanted to jump, which you don't necessarily want to want to jump from that thing. Hi, creeper. What are you doing? Where you go? Boom! Hello? Creeper? Boom! Yeah. So I ended up, like, closing him up there. So on top of stealing his pants for the night, I, like, locked him in the top of our engine. Not that you're really locked in there, but it was just a... We got, we got out to a fire, and we did awesome things. But the concept of getting there and finishing up, man, I just screwed everything up. It was it was very entertaining. Everybody was laughing on the way back just because of, you know, me, for one, delaying us for stealing his pants and then, you know, locking him on the top of the engine. But uh, we, we felt pretty good because being one of the guys on there, we're quite new at being what's called minimum staffing on the engine. We've only been minimum staffing for a very short period of time, and I mean like month and a half, two months. Whenever I put out that video saying that I had phased up, um, that's when we became minimum staffing, and neither of us have been to a fire since then, a working fire. We've gotten dispatched to many fires that turn out to be absolutely nothing, so we don't even get to really do anything, but none of us have gone to a working fire since then, so um, they were all extremely you know, extremely happy with the way that we, you know, have heated our training and all this stuff and got everything done exactly like we were supposed to do. Um, but it was just the concept of getting there that makes things entertaining and difficult. But hopefully I'll stop doing that because I know I, I, I would have had I not been able to find my stuff for another five seconds had he not said, you know, realized that I was putting his pants on and that's why I couldn't couldn't find my stuff is because it wasn't my pants. I would have had to just step out and have them go without me because I would have done, I would have been useless on the fire ground. Uh, I mean, I could have helped out in the, in the back, something that doesn't need gear, but when you have an assignment, you're really not supposed to be doing something else than what your assignment is. I mean, I guess you could always help. There's so many people that get dispatched in our county that it doesn't really matter. Um, if I was there or not, they could have handled things without me if I wasn't able to do the things that I had done anyway. So either way, it definitely left me extremely tired for the day. Um, that is one thing that is going to be different when I go back to the bedside nursing job is because of the fact that I will no longer be able to go to the fire station if I have to work in the morning because going to work in the morning from being at the fire station and being up all night is one thing when you have an office job, but I will not put the people's like patients' lives at risk, especially in an ICU, okay. just because I'm I was up all night and now I have to go work a twelve hour shift trying to make sure I keep you alive. I don't think that would be exactly moral or safe, so I will definitely be cutting back on the times that I go to the... Is this my other ladder? It is my other ladder. Look at that. I don't care about you guys. 
Oh my lord. I heard all these guys a long time ago, didn't I? Let's go find out what they are. They're like, they're right up here somewhere, aren't they? Yeah, they're like right here. It's all lit up up here. Why are they, why are there so many of them? Is there more above me that are, no? Oh, so he just didn't despawn because he had that in his hand. Yeah, this is an area I've already been to. Did that slime just follow me all the way up here? He's, uh, he really wanted to get some attention, didn't he? I hear you guys. There you are. Yeah, you're holding something, too. No wonder. What is that that you're holding? That looks really funny for a piece of cobble in your hand. It's a stack of cobble? Didn't know they could hold more than one thing. Oh, come on. I'm collecting all this rail to make up for the, the rail I used for Anders' thing in case I need it later. Not really that it's difficult to get a hold of, but while I'm here in this, uh, in this area, I should go ahead and do that. Okay, so I did that. So now let's go back down. I'm going to loop my way out of here. So this didn't turn out to be the greatest expedition to go get more iron and diamonds and things like that, but I guess it was just more story time. Um, I really need to, I, I've said this before, I need to buckle down in this hospital, but let me, let me be completely honest with you guys. I'm not a builder. I try my hardest. But when I come play Minecraft, I do it to, like, I love the way the front of this is looking, um... I really do like that. I think I should put glass all the way over there. But I really do like the way the front of this is looking. And just the inability to be able to get that color scheme right is really driving me insane. So it's actually making me want to work on it less and less because I feel like it's just looking more and more hideous as the days go on. Maybe what I can do is actually something I talked about doing, shoot, before Minecon is work on getting my helicopter pad finished and actually get a um, a helicopter up here. But I kind of do want them to have somewhere to go. But yeah, I do, I do like the helicopter pad. The looks of the helicopter pad. Oh, I needed to get some more um, half slabs around here as well, didn't I? Or some stairs around there, I do. Which I have, but yeah, I need to finish working on, on that at some point, but that is not something that's going to get done today. Look at my pretty colorful sheep farm. Awesome. Um, anyways, guys, yet another random video by Jay Sano. That seems to be my, my Minecraft mentality lately is just, it's not to actually get too much accomplished. It's just to kind of do stuff that's fun. Um, enjoy what I do. I need to do a lot of work off camera is what I really need to do and then I can buckle down and get the hospital done uh, with you guys one day. But anyways, hope you guys aren't getting too bored with it. Um, watch out for me. I won't only steal your shoes, but I'll steal your pants as well and I'll see you next time.